Hello and uh, welcome to a new video around Power Automate and SharePoint lists. This time we'll do something different. Uh, if you saw our last videos around creating different SharePoint lists to track and manage uh, projects, uh, we, we will extend that scenario today by implementing a weekly report sent to the management team with the milestones that are above um, a specific value. But first, here's our intro. So as you can see on the screen, we have those milestones listed here for different projects. We have this project has three milestones, Dell and Samsung as well. And Imagine a scenario where the manager needs a weekly report of the milestones that are above a specific value, let's say above $3,000. So let's jump to Power Automate and see how to do that. If you click on New Flow, we'll see here we have a scheduled cloud flow. This is the one we need. So let's give it a name. Let's call it Weekly, weekly Report. And it will, it will be starting next week, 10 a.m. Sounds pretty okay. And it will be repeating every week. And we want it only to repeat on Mondays. Click on Create. So we have our recurrence. Next step will be to grab the items from the SharePoint list and filter on that $3,000 mark. Before we do that, we want to take a look on our SharePoint list and see our milestone value. We mentioned before that what we see here as a column name is not always exactly the same what Power Automate sees. And for that, we have to go onto settings, list settings, click on the milestone value column. And you can see here in the URL, it says milestone value without a space. So let's copy that, go back to our flow. And we should, we need to search for get items because we need to get multiple items and not only one. Let's find our site address. The list name is the milestone tracker. And now if you click here, show advanced options, we have a filter query option. So here we can filter uh, based on the data we want to, to receive. So with the filter query, there's a specific way you can filter. You cannot use signs or uh, icons. You can only filter this way. So you have to write the first letter of the filter name. So GT is for greater than. And then we put our value and that's our filter. So next step will be to add a row into Excel. So I have already prepared an Excel spreadsheet with exactly the same columns we have in our SharePoint list. Project name, customer name, until milestone value, as you can see here. This needs to be in a table format with headers because that's what Power Automate will be recognizing as the column. So let's minimize that, minimize that for now and see where we are saving it. So I have saved it in my SharePoint list here, not least the SharePoint site, uh, at the documents general. So I've saved it here so I can access then via uh, Power Automate. So now if we go back to flow, we need to add a row into a table. Then we search the location, which is our SharePoint site, then the document library, which is the one we just saw, documents, and then the file itself, which is in the general folder. There it is. Then we have to select the table on that spreadsheet, which is table one. And now we can see the columns populating here. If the Excel spreadsheet didn't have the columns as a table, it wouldn't be recognized from our Power Automate. So that's very important. So we put a project name. 
In this case, we use project name value because our project name in our milestones table is a lookup field. That's why we need the value of that lookup. And it will automatically create and apply to each. The reason for that is because it knows, okay, we have multiple projects. The customer name is again a value. The customer code is again as a value. Since these three columns are lookup columns, we always have to take the value if we want the exact same uh, name. The project manager, we take the display name. For the milestone, we take the milestone name. And for value, we take the milestone value. So next step would be to add a delay. The reason for that is every time you send an Excel spreadsheet that you just populated via email without a delay, it, for me at least, it's always, I always receive it empty. I don't know if that's a delay uh, between in the cloud, it's not being saved uh, in time and it, it's already sent without saving it. I don't know what the, what the problem is, but uh, implementing like a two or three minute delay always works for me. So you can search for that delay. Just put two minutes, should be enough. Next step is to get file content. There it is. So we need now to get what's inside the file. That's why we search for get file content. Go then back to our SharePoint site and the file identifier we search in the shared documents, general, and our SharePoint file, which is an Excel, uh, Excel file. Next step is to send a notification. Send an email notification to, let's say, to the manager. In this case, it's me again. Subject is new weekly report. And we can write here, hello, please find the weekly report in the attachments. Regards PMO information. That should be enough. And in the advanced options, now we have here at the bottom the attachment and the attachment file name. So the attachment needs to contain the file content. And the attachment file name needs to have the exact same name from the file. So this one here with the extension. Click and save. Let's go back to our SharePoint list and take a look on how the milestones look like. So if we filter on the ones that are higher than 3000, which is 350, 5 and 6000, only these three, all the rest are below 3000. So we should receive now an Excel spreadsheet via email with these three milestones inside. Okay, flow is saved, but we have one more step to do. So after filling out the Excel spreadsheet with the data and then sending it to the manager, we want to use that Excel spreadsheet again next week, but we don't want to have the same data we had last week inside. So we need the automation after sending the email to go back to that Excel spreadsheet and delete every row that contains data, except of the headers, of course. For that, we need to search for delete a row. Again, to select the location of the Excel spreadsheet, which is in our SharePoint group, document library, documents, the file, which is our Excel spreadsheet, the table, which is our table one, 
and then we need to find a key column and a key value. So the Excel spreadsheet is going to look into that key column and delete every row that contains data in it. So that's why we can we should choose a column that will always contain data. Otherwise, it might have an, an error there. So I'm pretty sure that the project name will always be included. So if I use a project name as a key column, I also need to put the dynamic content as a key value from the project name. So I select project name value and it will automatically create and apply to each because it knows there are multiple rows. Let's save the automation and give it a go. Test, manually, save and test, and run flow. Okay, so this took a little bit longer than it should, but uh, hey, when you send a notification every once a week, you're not that in a hurry for one or two minutes, uh, as long as it gets where it has to go. So let's jump to my email account and see what we received. It says from Microsoft Power Apps, has a greeting. If you click on the SharePoint list, uh, that Excel spreadsheet, it has our three milestones. So that's it with uh, this short video. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, I think you can do a lot of stuff with SharePoint and Power Automate to make your life and the life of your managers uh, easier so that they don't bother you uh, every week. Send me a report for that, send me that. You can automate everything and uh, yeah, uh, work a happy life. Uh, so if you liked it, give the, give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel uh, that will uh, mean a lot to me since uh, it's been it's been not even a week that i've uh, uh, created the channel and um, yeah i will love to have the opportunity to make more videos like this anyways have a nice one and uh, see you in the next one cheers <laughs>